New features, new locations, new technologies, all the latest news on Star Citizen, all at one place. That's generally the idea of CitizenCon. But it has also managed to spawn controversy, plenty of criticism, and a fair bit of apathy. So while I'm going to tell you what I'm expecting at CitizenCon this year, I'm also going to talk about how CIG might improve their biggest event going forward. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. And thanks to my newest Patreon supporters, Cody the Noble, Namtrack, and Soy Sauce. Yum. Before we start, if you are looking for a fun way to enjoy this event, scroll down to the video description and hit the link to remind yourself about the Tomato Citizen Con watch party. We'll be talking about the ongoing show and the features that are shown, bringing on some guests and giving away a few games. Ever since 2013, CitizenCon has been the must-see annual event to know what's going on with Star Citizen. From the mostly discussion-based original show to the high-budget 2019 show to the controversial 2016, it has flip-flopped every which way in its style and format and has succeeded and failed in actually producing what was shown off in many different ways. What you see at CitizenCon may be a while away, as in multiple quarters? or multiple years. I go over the turbulent history in quite a bit of detail in the latest blog post on my website linked down below. But knowing all of this, you should approach the entire event as a visually pleasing showcase of what CIG has planned over the next X number of years. See, it's a mix of close at hand features and far out concepts that have been made to work in this limited environment. The E3 model, but with a twist. Every year has had its own big first. Whether it be the first planet tech, first jump point, or first multi-crew demo, there is always something special that may be close or much further away. And that can be what the convention is remembered for. And as I'll discuss throughout the video, this will need to change to keep CitizenCon relevant with the times, but more on that later. In 2019, the big demo was split between the opening and the closing, and with a similar setup planned for this year, it's very possible they'll do the same. However, the panel doesn't necessarily mention any gameplay, so there may be a keynote, there may not. But I'll just continue as if there will be. The beginning of this demo could show some of the smaller features they've been working on. Some of the new NPC behaviors and possibly navigation outside of a city new planet tech features, and new inventory interactions could be shown here as well. Maybe the new cargo system might function in some way, or the recreated air traffic control system, there. Should be waiting for you in the hangar. which will hopefully make takeoff and landing much easier. We could also get to finally see what the new star map looks like, but that one scares me. Besides these future features, there are a huge amount of small additions that could show up during the first keynote, but nothing too mind-blowing. And there may not even be any gameplay in this segment to begin with. That being said, what this time will no doubt be is a chance to set up the tone and atmosphere for the entire presentation, with Chris making an opening speech and likely discussing the recent years and current state of the game. If you are planning on seeing the last panel, which will likely be one of the most interesting, I'd tune into this one as well. After the opening keynote, we'll move on to the first panel, Live in the Verse. The official description reads, this year's biggest panel takes you on a guided tour of the current in-game universe. Join the developers who bring it all to life to explore locations, systems, gameplay, and more. Interesting that their biggest panel at CitizenCon would be about the current in-game universe. I wonder if they want to take that chance to focus on some of the current problems and things that people may notice and talk about what they want to do to fix them. That being said, there are a lot of big names on this panel, which means opportunity for some important information to be shared and acknowledged. This is likely not going to just be a showcase of what is in the game, but also a chance to hear a little bit about near future gameplay. It just might not be the most interesting of panels. Up next in the schedule, of course, is all about ships. The official description reads, In this year's Ship Talk presentation, John Crew, Ben Curtis and Paul Jones reveal new and upcoming ships. 
delve into their journey through production and provide some much anticipated updates about a fan favorite vessel. Again, many big names on this panel, and it sounds like there is guaranteed to be a lot of news here. We will likely get progress updates on the whole series of ships, maybe a couple of profession starter ships, and a couple of the unannounced ships that we've been seeing in the monthly reports, including the reportedly completed one. I don't think we'll hear much about features in this one considering the lack of any vehicle tech team members, but the hosts may still have some things to say on that front. Every sci-fi fan I think is going to enjoy this one, just for the eye candy. If you have the time, you should definitely tune in. Now from here on out, things get more crunchy. Of course, we go straight into the deep end with a panel about the in-house Gen 12 renderer and Vulkan API. The official description reads, We'll delve into the nitty gritty details of Gen 12, the new renderer being developed for Star Citizen and Squadron 42, utilizing the Vulkan Graphics API, with a particular focus on multi-CPU parallelism, as well as improved flexibility for quicker feature development. We'll look at why it was needed, its architecture and how this aids performance, and we'll give you an update on its progress. These are big ticket items for the optimization and backend tech crowd. If you're one of the folks who think they should stop features and focus on making the game more smooth, this one's for you. While the Gen 12 renderer may not be the golden fix to all your problems, and from what it sounds like in the description, also not be close to complete implementation, there is a chance it could greatly increase performance for certain machines as it will have a big impact on how our computers show us the game world. It has been a very long-term project, so the investment into it makes this a very important part of the game. If you're just casually watching this event, this would be the panel to go grab some big bennies or take the 30k. There will be great summaries released within days of it going live, but those looking for all the info won't want to miss this panel. The next panel sounds like a fun one, and will be a big mix of gameplay and eye candy, planetary tools and tech. Maybe I should have held off on my own recent planetary tools and tech video. Oh well. The official description reads, a big picture look at some of the new planet tech features being developed to help further bring Star Citizen to life. This one is hosted by a wide range of programmers who will undoubtedly give us a look at some of the newer tools they've been working on. While we are used to seeing the Biome Painter and Height Map Editor, I think we may go a bit deeper this time, with another look at rivers and terrain modification, new height map achievements with canyons and mountains, wildlife AI, lava, points of interest such as derelicts, and maybe even some more extreme landscapes. None of these are confirmed, but we'll see. I think this one will be an interesting watch for anybody to tune into. Arguably the most important panel of the day, so no pressure, this one covers server meshing and persistence. While not the answer to every question, definitely two of the most up in the air and sought after fundamental features in the game, both possibly do in some way next year. The description reads, Discover the transformative technologies of server meshing and persistent streaming. A deep dive into the technical architecture of these key core initiatives that will enable a truly massive, scalable, and persistent world. Persistence will allow for exactly what it says, all things in the game to persist in their state and location, anywhere, anything. This adds a ton of implications and possible complications to the game, and ties into just about every aspect of it. So even though it's expected in the next couple of quarters after 316, it has been on the minds of backers for more than half a decade. Server meshing is in a similar state. While further off in the distance, its importance isn't diminished. Server meshing in different forms will allow for the always connected environment that could allow for thousands of players in a shared space. This panel will likely be very technical and incredibly information dense. And while I think everybody would benefit from watching, if you're mainly here for the eye candy, it might be worth waiting for the summary. That being said, I will be disappointed if this doesn't include some sort of in-game working representations or demonstrations of the technology. From here, we move to the sounds of space. This one interests me a lot because audio is a weird thing in Star Citizen. But before we go there though, the official description reads, the mad minds behind the soundscapes of Star Citizen take you on a guided tour of the latest developments in the innovative new audio tech that truly brings the verse to life. This is interesting because I haven't really seen much on the audio tools other than the Audio Kinetic Wise software that's the industry standard. So it'll be interesting to see what in-house tech they've made to help out. I really hope to be impressed here. 
I'm hoping this demo shows more tangible progress and informs us a bit of the hurdles and milestones that need to be met to get to their ultimate goal. And judging by recent monthly reports, I think they have some interesting progress for us. That being said, most people know if they do or don't like sound effects, so I'd pick this panel depending on which crowd you belong to. The final standalone panel is a Tony Z talk, so it could be a long one. They're telling us we need to hurry up. <laughs> you jump ahead, I guess. Uh, I, you, want you guys want us to hurry up or keep going? <laughs> Systemic Gameplay Stream of Thought is the name. And it also includes some major names regarding gameplay systems. This may not be the most important panel, but it could very likely be the most interesting Star Citizen info drop we've ever received. The official description reads, Tony Zurevic leads a wide-ranging discussion with Rob Reiniger, Ben Dorsey, and Luke Presley about upcoming features like selling used items, local inventory, the convergence of their reputation and mission systems, why physicalized cargo is so important, the next couple of dynamic events, and more. Tony will also give an update on how efforts to integrate the first few bits of the quantum simulation into the game are proceeding. Now the one thing that could ruin this panel is also what will make it great, the talking. While there's still plenty to design in this game just like previous years, at this point CitizenCon needs to begin to be about the gameplay and tangible advancements, rather than the theory. I do really hope they focus on explaining the need to know details that pertain to the next year or so of gameplay, and demonstrate the systems in some way. I'd like to see the quantum system displayed in a separate way than through the hex interface we've seen in 2019 and now 2021. I would also very much hope they have something to tell us about their plans going forward with the mission system and its expansion in the near future. Finally, touching on physicalized cargo, the cargo refactor, and physicalized hangars are all things I would also like to see happening in this panel. It's all a bit of a wish list, but at this point in development and given the expected features in the next 18 months, I think it's time we start to get a more concrete idea of what happens on the player facing side in the immediate future, now that major backend components are wrapping up. It's phase 4 of Star Citizen development. Time for a little bit of change. To close the show, of course, Chris is back on with a likely roadmap for the future, which I pray to every entity known to man doesn't include dates. And assuming there is a keynote, he'll also be wrapping up the demo if they started it at the beginning of the convention. If so, this half will likely be the more exciting half. We may see things like the reworked MFDs, new security systems, NPC wingmen, deeper interaction with reputations, computer blades, and more. There's an immense amount of content being worked on, and a lot of it has been mentioned in the last two years, and then has not returned. It's a bit similar to 2017 in that regard. However, as I said before, it's a different time, and CitizenCon needs to give different information. The road to release is something which should always be acknowledged and updated, and the panels should be central locations where the most up-to-date information on the major pillars of the game should be found both short and long term. And while this may mean subjects stay similar, the content should still be changing as the game progresses in development. Finally, the keynote that we see that hundreds of thousands of potential new players will be seeing for the next year should represent the game in that year. Otherwise, CitizenCon will inevitably grow boring as the gameplay falls further and further behind the showcase. Nobody wants to see the same unreleased features multiple years in a row. This is clearly something that will need to be dealt with now or later, and I hope it's now, and CIG can put together an interesting and engaging demo that represents near-at-hand possibilities, even if it's not quite as exciting. And that brings us back to the concept we began with. This event needs its big first. A bummer, since the big feature of next year was shown off two years ago. Instead of focusing on a major feature this year, maybe the keynote can present a true slice of what Star Citizen can be in the next year. Similar to the previous show and goal, but more well-rounded in its execution. This is a good opportunity for CIG to use some of the key features in the next year to paint a realistic session of gameplay that players can look back on for years without feeling a little salty. Take advantage of new social system features, new locations, new professions, and new technological advancements that we can expect to get our hands on in the next 12 months. 
Whether or not CIG takes this approach, or another much better one, is anybody's guess. But all of these things, a few technical issues... Can we get uh, player two on uh, my screen left, please? No, I need player one in the main screen. Player two screen left it was, but... Back to player one. Can I get player one back on the main screen, please? Player one, main screen. Thank you. Okay, that's player one on the screen right. Main screen, please. Can it can't kill the right screen? And some showing off from Glenn. Good job, Glenn. Glenn Glenn's just showing off. Glenn likes to show off. <laughs> it's just a show off, Glenn. <laughs> we'll likely all be present at the event, as will my watch party on this channel, October 9th, 7 a.m. PST. Be there to enjoy the show, hear from some guests, and possibly win a copy of the game. And join us on the Garden Discord to chat, play games, and hang out other times as well. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something in this one, and I'll catch you in the next. Thanks to my top supporters, TK, Ken Garcia, Valiant15, The Alpaca, Holston Coop, The Huntress, Dasek, Guilty Conscious, Extreme Tuber 7, El Gordo, Jarzy, Niku, Jin, Bilal Eliasem, and Brian Peterson.